Hello, I'm Arthur Works, and welcome to the premiere edition of Portrait of Artists. Today we will examine three artists from our community and the contributions they have made to the world of art. First, we take a look at the quirky and stylistic combination of surrealism and trompoy of Joe Stanky. Hello, my name is Joe Stanky. I am a Milwaukee area artist, uh, born and raised in Milwaukee. I am uh, now I am currently president of the uh, AC Art Association, which meets at uh, West Dallas City Hall. I am a lifetime member of uh, the West Dallas Art Alliance, and I am also past president of the League of Milwaukee Artists. So those kind of outfits really keep me busy and away from my studio where I really want to be doing my paintings. I'm an oil painter. Uh, I work in surrealism and Trump I two uh, complicated sounding things, but I'll explain what they are when we, uh, as we go along. This piece is called Do Not Pass Go. It's kind of obvious, it's a collection of game boards. Uh, I collected the game boards, bought them from thrift stores, built, cut them apart, put them together, and did the painting you see there today. In my work, I, I strive for uniqueness. Uh, this particular piece is a stretch canvas that actually comes out of the frame and gives the illusion that it's, uh, hopefully, that it's coming forward. The painting is uh, titled The Attitude, uh, which is a young lady that certainly has an attitude, I believe. This piece is called The Way Things Are Going, the piece with John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Um, there was uh, part of a song uh, that goes, Christ, you know it's not easy. Uh, you know how hard it can be, the way things are going, they're going to crucify me. I got Lennon, obviously, on a, crucified on a, on a cross, uh, with the vertical part being the neck of a guitar. The notes are the actual line in the song, the title of the painting, The Way Things Are Going. Uh, I've always been a big Lennon fan. This piece is titled, The Green Green Glass From Home. It's three pieces of green glass that I set up and painted, but the difference is I put it on, I put it on uh, plaster. This is plaster with a real pieces of wood frame in there and pieces of material uh, that my wife gave me. This was an old chenille bed, bedspread that I stuck into the wet plaster. I took these two characters, did a painting on the inside cover, and I replaced my wife and I. Uh, and it's continued for the men. This piece is called the Red Handbag. That's a pretty good example of Trompoy painting. Trompoy is French for fool the eye, and an artist's attempt is to make make the viewer believe that this is a piece of paper torn and stuck onto a wooden board. This happens to be real wood and it's painted. This is the wood grain painted to look like this real wood. So it yin yangs back and forth. This is a real purse. The bottom of this coming out of the painting is a real leather purse and it slowly turns into the painted handbag that the woman is holding. <clears throat> this happens to be which once was my wife's black handbag and uh, obviously I cut it in half and uh, <clears throat> used it for this painting. Uh, other things are this door knocker which I had in my back door and this is, I had this all set up in my studio at one time when I was doing the painting. This is a wire outfit that ladies stretch their gloves on after they wash them. Uh, so they can dry in position. Uh, I had a good friend of mine said that uh, 
this is uh, from the Sistine Chapel. This is supposed to be God's hand in creating Adam. She said I shouldn't have this right next to the, the palm reading, and I said uh, that I really thought it should be next to it because they're both about faith. This painting is called uh, Tapping Purple because there is a tap handle here, and the paint is coming out of the, out of the tap. Uh, it's coming from a candelabra with uh, color cranes. There's 53 uh, paint cans with 53 different colors. This one's called the Ascension, uh, with the Christ figure rising above a collection of crosses. Uh, I'm doing a series called Collections, and um, I had to work the collections in somewhere, and I, I like this, uh, the Christ figure in a prenatal position. He's leaving the earth the way he came into the earth, uh, at least from this this artist's point of view. This piece is called Put on a Happy Face. And uh, this is, the painting is the shape of an artist's palette with all the makeup tools, the woman's makeup tools coming out of the, the hole where the thumb goes. Um, the rest of it is pretty obvious, the little right hand face, the clown face, and so forth. Alright, this piece uh, was a, an assemblage of uh, mice that was loaned to me by a lady living in West Dallas uh, named Judy Price, who was connected with uh, Channel 10 Auction. And I'm calling this Price's Mice. This painting is called An Angel's Flute. This painting is called The French Curve, which is this plastic tool here. These are all drawing tools, and this is one painting where I combined trompe l'oeil with the surrealism. The surrealism being the fact that you couldn't actually get an 8 inch model to set in there with all these other drawing tools, and the fact that this bottom of the, the background board is, is melting. And, uh, those are things that just came out of my head. This painting is uh, titled T for Two, and it's kind of obvious, but to point it out, we have a teapot, a tea ball, two teacups, one filled with hot tea, one filled with golf teas, and a tea square, and the letter T's reflected on the black plastic or black glass table. This is a an actual postcard that I purchased in Australia for a friend. I decided to keep it and do a painting from it. I took this postcard to Kinko's and had them enlarge it to an 8 inch uh, life size uh, picture of John Lennon. I folded that, I folded that Kinko copy up and carried it around in my back pocket for a couple of weeks. Um, that became the setup for the painting that I call Working Class Hero, as you see now. Um, the setup, I got an oval picture frame from the basement and stuck the, the folded Kinko copy behind it. I bought a pair of real sunglasses and poked them through the, the holes in the, in the copy. My daughter borrowed me her necklace with a cross on it poked at it and then I, hardest thing to find was a 38 bullet and I actually got it from a, a little old lady at an art meeting who said her deceased husband had left a box of 38 bullets behind and gave it to me, told me she didn't want it back. So uh, uh, the premise is a little grim I was told but after all he was murdered, he was assassinated so uh, this painting is called Cute as a Button, and uh, the model for this was a student of mine who agreed to uh, come over to my studio, lie on the floor, give her a pillow, and built a box around her, around her head, uh, and 
dumped all these buttons. I tried to make it look like she was in a sea of, a sea of buttons. And uh, took a series of photos of her. Uh, like the one with the blue eyes looking off to the side. And, formed a sort of a heart shape around her face and I had a little little heart in there along with all the other buttons. This painting is called The Red Sweater. This is probably one of the first ones that I attempted to marry the two painting styles, Surrealism and Trompoy, together. In the lower half of the painting you see the, the Trompoy thumbtack wounds in the wood, or painted wood I should say, and then the drawing paper folded up and then right where the sweater, the bottom of the sweater comes, everything turns into, from black and white into color. This painting is called Julie Through the Glass. Um, my oldest daughter Julie modeled for this. The hardest part, of course, was getting her into the salt shaker. Um, the title is also the title of a Carly, uh, Carly Simon song called Julie to the Glass, which makes reference to our newborn baby. And uh, so this painting has some sentiment away from me. Alright, this painting is a painting of my microwave oven. Um, I'm not a big fan of winter, and I thought it would really be wonderful if we could have winter in a microwave oven and push the frost. Uh, this painting is called Just Defrost, and um, it's a totally surrealistic piece. Uh, Easter Island, where they never have winter, all the Easter Island heads is uh, part of this painting, obviously, and uh, the two figures, the young lady with the grass skirt and the young man in the fifth helmet, if you look hard at the two faces, they're the faces from Grant Wood's American Gothic painting, uh, better known to the non-art public as the farmer with the pitchfork and, and the daughter. These two people, actually Grant Woods models, were his sister Nana and his dentist, Dr. McKeady. Dennis Wicker uses found objects, entering a new frontier to create a unique abstract form of art. Hi. I'm Dennis Wicker, an artist in the local Milwaukee area. I'd like to talk about and show you my art. Like this piece, entitled Mardi Gras Medusa. It's textured art. Backgrounds done with spray paints and uh, the rest is hand painted with acrylics. Well, when I, I did the texture on this piece, I didn't really know what it was going to look like when I was done and I started painting all the ridges and bringing some color into it and all of a sudden there some areas I didn't paint yet I saw a shape of uh, sort of a human form and, and then I included some of that into this piece and that's what gives Mardi Gras Medusa her uh, image I guess or some, somewhat of an image. Uh, I like to make mirrors and uh, I, f I build the frames myself. This is a uh, polymer casting agent and then I, uh, this one here is treated with spray paints but I uh, plan on doing others where I hand paint the individual texture of the frame. Functional art. with the functional art. This is a working cribbage board. I uh, 
uh, did the game board first, and uh, then I wanted to decorate it, and uh, I decided that a parrot would fit into this narrowing here with the tail feathers, and I just uh, reversed the image and turned the head a little bit on, on the second pair here. And this is a planter wall decoration. I have quite an extensive collection of driftwood which I from time to time make things out of. And you can actually change the uh, foliage in this piece. This is a piece I called On the Reef. And these are actually scrapings of uh, actual bondo that was used to repair motorcycle panels which I save and uh, I thought I'd incorporate it into some of my art someday and I did. This is what I came up with. This is actually textured up to about an inch and a half and it's quite fragile around the edges. It breaks pretty similar to glass. It's actually uh, two types of uh, wallpaper that I actually was